Hello, so thank you. I'm Paul Lee. I'm the co-founder of All Mule Audio. We uh, did our crowdfunding um, two years ago. <coughs> and uh, now it's old news enough that I think I can tell you what happens afterwards. So today, the past two sessions, you talk, did, did you've learned from Ivan about uh, how to make a million dollar crowdfunding campaign and you heard from Napoleon on how to, how to digital market the hell of everything. So um, let me ask, who, how many people here are, are, are thinking of doing a crowdfunding campaign? And OK. How many have you done it before? There you go. All right, cool. So um, let me share what I have learned. So assuming you've, you've heard all the upbeat and fun stuff that Ivan and Napoleon told you about, and you made your, your campaign, I mean, so we, we didn't make a million, do a million dollars a couple of years ago. That was in the baby stage of, of crowdfunding. But um, we passed nonetheless. And uh, what happens? Congratulations. Of course, give yourself a, a pat in the back. Uh, relax a little bit. But actually, the hard work, of course, uh, I'm here to tell you the doom and gloom after the glorious crowdfunding success. So um, it's actually not all doom and gloom. Uh, but we do need to go back in time machine because a lot of what happens afterwards should at least be thought of beforehand. Before, while you're planning, for, planning the crowdfunding, uh, and certainly when you know that you are, you're definitely going to succeed. You need all the time you, you, you have to plan for certain things. One, you need to plan about factory. Um, unless you really plan on just scamming the, the money and not delivering, factory is going to be taking up a lot of your time. And you really should be at least talking about it or thinking about it while you're planning the campaign because one cold hard fact about factories are they live on margins and they thin margins and they really live on volume they they much rather do crunch out these iphone cases uh for for a cent of profit per unit but as hundreds and thousands of units per month non-stop flowing all the, all the time Versus you, you may give them a margin of maybe $100, but a successful crowdfunding may be 5,000 units, and you don't really have a follow-up. You, you, there's no guarantee that you can sell another 5,000 the next month and another 5,000 the month after that. So factories, they're, they're a little less picky nowadays uh, because I think uh, a lot of them are facing tough times as well. But you do think about the fact that if they do take on you, it probably is because they're trying to, to, to get out of the squeeze of the big suppliers that they, they, they deal with. Um, and again, if, a, if an iPhone case come along their way, they probably would value that more than yours. And they may not drop you, but they may just do it slowly. They may, they may put the, right, the, the best people on the other lines. So you need to cultivate your factory relationship early on, and as, especially when you know that you're crowdfunding project is a success, you really need to start working with them and say, hey, what are the timelines? And the production timelines, uh, every product is a little different. Uh, some of them are purely electronic, so those are just like stamping, 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 and then the plastic case. Those might be easy, but um, in today's crowdfunding, probably you have to have some gimmick and you have to have some special knob or special design. or uh, Just make sure that you go through that with the factory because Every single little change, um, in the end, when, when it, it needs to be factored into a manufacturable process for thousands of them to come off the, the line every day. So they, they do need to know of every little change. And hardware, unlike software, a millimeter of unfit is, is, is it. I mean, you can't, you, you can't change anything. So lots of planning. And there will be lots of production uh, trials. Um, and in my personal experience and from people I deal with, uh, they usually say the third run is usually the, the one that actually will, will turn smooth. Even though you've done trials, a couple hundred units of, uh, of samples, there's still a lot of room for error. And even after the first batch, there's still room for error. And, and so be, be prepared that whatever the factory tells you, oh, yeah, we can do this in half a year, um, make sure that that is the case. I'm not saying that they'll always be late, but you need to actually have a, a project manager working with them almost daily to make sure that, you know, don't take anything for granted. Um, production line, once that's set up, you also have to think about testing uh, and certification. 
drop test, you know, uh, uh, electromagnetic wave test, uh, whatever your product is, there will be some some FCC or some other certification that you have to go through. Uh, set aside a budget for that. It's probably going to be a couple thousand US, if not more. If you have Bluetooth, that that's another couple bunch of cost. Uh, different markets. Uh, Japan is notorious for its telex, T E L E C T. I think that's the how it's how to spell it. Takes a long time and and very expensive to pass. Um, but they don't, they won't sell anything unless it has the telex mark. Telex mark. Um, China, no, sorry, um, Korea actually is even worse. I forgot what their name is called. Uh, I haven't got it yet. I haven't reached the, the Korea market yet. But um, you know know beforehand uh, what tests you need to do because don't let it become a surprise. It also takes time. Uh, you also need to provide samples for the testing agencies to do the drop test, the water test, or whatever it is. So uh, it takes time, it takes resources, and it takes samples. Uh, make sure you plan them ahead. Oh, packaging. So packaging is fun. Uh, not really. So people don't really think, when I was doing crowdfunding at least, I certainly didn't think package, it was in the back of my mind like way back. Uh, but packaging is actually first of all one of the early, the easiest thing that you can prepare for because you know it can be as simple as a box it can be it can be very elaborate but you you know uh, what it's going to be or you can you know you can hire someone to 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 design for it there's very little um, it doesn't have testing it doesn't have certification uh, there's very little that you need to worry about unless unless you actually already know that you're going to be an apple store which probably is not the case but uh, apple store has a very elaborate set of rules on how white your package has to be and, 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 and does it have a window and stuff like that. But otherwise, do it early, hire someone to do it or give it to a designer, but make sure you have it ready because the, the saddest thing in the world I was told was you have all your gleaming products out the factory line and no boxes to put them in. Uh, you are still late, you are still, but that's a very, a very avoidable um, mistake if you will. However, um, me being a first time hardware producer for this product when I was, was delivering it, uh, I treat everything as, as, as my baby, right? I mean, it has to be nice, it has to be high quality, feels good. So we put a lot of design into in the packaging. Uh, one advice I can give you is uh, if it's crowdfunding, um, you don't, the, the, the buyers don't really get to see the packaging before it. It's not a deciding factor. Uh, I think that packaging you can actually skim a little bit. Um, and not make it very, very nice. In my case, I thought, oh, I'm just going to go straight to retail, so let's make it jewel box and, and hard paper and all these. Uh, we got high prices for the packaging, but um, one is expensive. Two, uh, there are other things to consider rather than style. For example, um, the display size on the shelves. I'm no, I'm no retail god, right? But talk to some retail guy, retail. Uh, the, the, the target retail chains that you are targeting, how do they, how do they position their, how do they sh show in the, in the, in the displays? Uh, is your box too big? Is it taking up too much space? Uh, even container sizes, like my, my box is, um, I forgot how big it is, but, but it's more, almost like a cube. Um, it was not very good in transportation. Like when you pack it into, into a carton, it doesn't hold as, as many. Uh, so there's a lot of spatial, uh, thing to, to, to consider uh, as well as also is your packaging easy to to, 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 do, to be damaged. For example, we have a jewel case which gets scratched easily. So the return, the, the return rate was pretty high. Um, and then shipping. Shipping is another thing that you don't tend to remember or think about until you're, you're about to do it. And you think, oh, it's shipping. It's like mailing an envelope. Um, no, actually it is a lot worse because it is about mailing thousands of envelopes at the same time to different places. Um, all of these different places have taxes. Uh, you have to worry about tax and you have to worry about custom. Um, some of the places like Brazil, like Germany, um, South America in general, they actually, Indonesia, the, the custom can actually hold up and often they hold up the package and they say, oh, this is this looks like an electronics, this looks expensive. It's declared as $200, we think it's $500. Uh, so they actually would ask the, the buyer to come up to the customs office and pay up an extra 100 or something. We actually have had a quite a number of P 
people, first of all from these countries, ask us to under report the value of the thing, which we did not do because we don't want to, you know, uh, get in the wrong side of with the with the with the, with the whole country's uh, custom. But even if you say, okay, we don't do it, uh, please please pre be prepared to pay your taxes um, when you when when it gets to the custom. If they get held up, the customer, your backer, more often than not, actually they would decide, well, you know what, it's an extra hundred dollars, I just don't have it. Um, they they would just not pay for it. And it doesn't end there because if they don't pay for it, you still get charged. You either get charged for it to ship to be shipped back, which is going to be a hundred dollars, or you will be charged for it to be destroyed, which is also a hundred dollars in our case. I'm like, what? Why don't you just throw it into the Pacific Ocean and be done with it? No, it has to be certified by a certification agency. Someone has to witness the destruction and it is gone, and and that's a hundred dollars. I'm like, yeah. So so so. They are, they are ask, ask a shipping company, right? They, they know which are the problematic countries and maybe be prepared to say charge for more while your campaign is on so to cover the potential taxes and the customs um, or maybe just don't sell to those countries. Uh, so make sure you work with your shipping provider to build those into your, your terms and conditions during the campaign. And. Uh, Shipping is, is it going to be an evolving thing that you may also have to have a person or half a person to look after. I, I have a friend who's been selling millions of dollars worth of goods every year on the online for, for maybe 10 years. He still has to hire a guy to, 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 to compare rates from UPS and FedEx and different places and stay, in, stay up to date with the shipping rules. Um, for example, last year when we first shipped our products, uh, there happened to be a rule, a new rule, I don't know if it's FAA or if it's the Hong Kong government, in the end it's about no more package, packages cannot carry anything more than two batteries. That, two lithium ion batteries, that really limited the, the, the bulk mailing that we can do and that affected a lot of our costs as well. So it's an evolving thing that is not, again, mailing a letter is easy, shipping 5,000 units of electronics is not. Uh, which also actually, if your product does not have battery, you're going to have a lot better time shipping because it, it, it's explosive. Um, apart from that, stay focused. Make sure you deliver your, your product. Um, you will get inquiries and you will get ideas because you had a successful crowdfunding. Make sure you at least some of your team have to be staying focused and producing it because the whole world is watching uh, unless you are a scam of course. Um, definitely update your backers all the time. Um, I pull up this, these three screenshots because we actually, we were pretty good at updating. We, we had 46 updates which means more than one per week for, for, for better half of a year, better part of a year. And uh, on the left side it's just, I just want to show you the, the numbers but on the right side I'm showing you two of my updates showing the bad news. Sh share the bad news early and often. Uh, good news of course but bad news actually work. Um, you, you come across as honest, you share, when it's crowdfunding people think of it as they are backing you, they are, it's more than just a purchase. Not quite an investment but they are in for the journey as well. That was part of the draw and they want to know well most of them anyway want to know that they are part of it. Uh, it almost feels like if you overcome something they probably have something to do with it as well. But definitely just share. You can't hide it anyway. So here on the top one, uh, shipping was a problem. What, what on earth is going on with our shipping back in, back in time. Um, this one was the, was the production problem. I mean we thought we had a hundred samples done perfectly. When the first 500 rolled out of the factory floor, uh, there were problems. Because 100, 100 units is still kind of handmade, 500 is already stamped and there were some process problems and something didn't work. And we actually had to scrap the 500 and that delayed us by another three months. Do share them. Uh, people will be pissed but don't be afraid to engage them and spend a lot of time engaging them. Um, the other guy earlier said for every thousand backers you can expect one. I think that or maybe ton. No, for every ten backers you can expect one question. Um, it's probably true every 10 backer maybe one will ask a question but those who ask questions will keep asking and it, uh, if you look at it my, I have, I had over a thousand comments with three thousand backers. So it's higher than that I think. Now 
All these pay off though. First of all, uh, you, you free yourself of the guilt of not delivering or, or delay or whatnot. But people do actually take notes. For example, like this guy, right? He, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but he's pissed. DCW was pissed about something. Uh, but because I've been open, before I got to reply to him, crowdfunding defender came and defend me. Um, and then another person, and actually there's more. So a lot of people, so when you're honest and open with the, they, they understand you're not Apple, you're not Microsoft, you can't be held to the same standard, and it's not a real product yet. Uh, just be honest, you will win over your friend, and, um, and actually that, 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 that means a lot to me as well. Uh, another guy, this guy, I love it, uh, Kyle Melgard. Uh, he, he, he didn't like certain things, um, and he actually even opened up a little group on Facebook uh, called Omio Becker, I think. Uh, I think his intention was to bitch there and just to create the media uh, shitstorm to, to force me into doing something. But I actually called him. I called him and I talked to him, and we shipped in the product, and, and first of all, he did stop making problems. Second is when I show, when I, when I post the, the startup launch pad, you know, I'm gonna be here, come, 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 come like it. He, he, to this day, he still liked me. He has actually turned into one of the most consistent likes, if you will, on Facebook. So you truly can turn all these problematic things around, uh, uh, backers around, uh, and they would become a staunch supporter. And there are more, um, more things that, you may get lucky like me, right? So this guy was also a backer. I never knew he was a backer. I never knew who, who he was. But uh, um, Napoleon just now was talking about the social media, the, the key, the KOR, K, K -O -L, K -O -P -N K -O -L, KOL, right? <laughs> the KOL, he, was, he happened to be KOL in, in the space of music. So my product was about uh, detecting what your hearing is, and then we would play all the music to best fit you, like glasses for her ears. So this guy was a, was a, was a, was a musician on YouTube with a million followers and he openly admitted that he has hearing loss. So he found me, I didn't find him, so I was lucky. He backed me, he silently been using my product for over a year, including to make music. And, and March this year, he actually reached out to me and said, hey, I want to do a little promotion for free for you because I love it so much. Um, and look, I mean, he, his video generated 323,000 views. It's more than all my combined might multiplied by 100. So, um, and the, he's not the only one. I mean, your backer actually is, a, is a, probably a gold mine of sorts. I've, I've had a Japanese singer who, who, uh, who promoted, or did a, did a little, little article about my product as she released her second album. Uh, I've had DJs and other, other things. So, reach out to your backers, maybe keep in touch with them with like, um, uh, questionnaire or, or just fun little updates, you might have some KOL in your, in your crowd. Um, so all these uh, basically says that you, after the crowdfunding campaign, I mean, you're gonna have a long drought of, of income because you, you're not crowdfunding anymore. Uh, but don't stop selling. Um, all these would help you sell in eventually and definitely go to Startup Launchpad, right, for example. Uh, you can do the trade shows and you can keep your face, uh, keep posting updates, keep people know that you're alive. Um, and this is us last year, we were there. And look at us, we had lots of people lining up. So just, be, it also lets you back and know that you're real. Um, and all these work actually would lead you to the, hopefully to the next, next stage. For us, we found uh, our distributors uh, through the, the KOLs, through the trade shows, and one happy ending was Japan. We actually licensed uh, our, our trade rights to Japan to this exclusive distributor, and they did a crowdfunding campaign in their local Japanese place called Maku Ake. That's the, the Japan marketplace. Um, and just recently, we, we closed with six million yen. That's like $60,000, that's not a lot, but, but it's good. And, 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 and hopefully we can replicate it in different countries and different markets. And um, well, it's not the end, uh, but hopefully I can, I've, I've told you, given you enough insight about what could happen within a year of after the closing of your campaign. So that's all I have for now. I'll maybe meet you next year and tell you what the second year is. Uh, any questions now? Hi.
Hi. Uh, thank you for presentation. Actually, I have a question. Uh, so, uh, after you succeeded with your campaign, uh, you got customers. Uh, what was uh, the percentage? So, uh, most of them were from uh, USA. Or ah. Well, that, we went with Indiegogo, and Indiegogo has this nice chart. And uh, if I remember right, I think half of them was USA. Uh, that that's no surprise because we targeted all the ads and everything on in the US. What was surprising was everything else. Um, the second was Hong Kong, which I guess is not too surprising because I'm here. <laughs> but third is uh, third is Singapore. I've never set foot in Singapore. I didn't know if we didn't target them. Uh, and then there's little bits and pieces of different places of EU, Japan, and these things. But you get all this information from Indiegogo. I'm sure Kickstarter has that as well. Uh, so the question is actually. Uh, uh, did it make any difference? Because for uh, if you have some electronics, uh, you want to be imported to USA. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have to do some uh, uh, special licensing FCC to yeah. US and another kind of licensing for Europe? But uh, uh, how can you do it for small countries? For Indonesia, maybe they have something different. So uh, how did you solve that? Uh, can you refuse to ship to some countries? Then you lose your face. How you do it? Yeah, so that was actually that very good. That ties back to my shipping, right? So some of that would, could be custom, the other would, could be, could be um, certification. So FCC and CE are the two things that you probably have to get if you have batteries in your electronics. I mean, and they, they, they work in most of the world. So those two do it. Uh, everything else, I would say, like Japan, they actually, uh, maybe 10, 15, or, or 100 people bought from us in the campaign, and we did not have the certification yet. Uh, Korea to this day I do not have them. For small shipments like that, um, I think it's okay. But as long as, as soon, because they're, they're mail ordering from other places, you're not selling, you, you do not have presence in the, in the country. So I, Then it's not necessary. I, I'm not a lawyer, but... Uh, no, no, that, no. Yeah. I'm asking about practice. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, no, but practice I think so. I think that's fine. Um, I, I, again, I, I don't know the, what the legal, the real legal answer is. But from my experience from, and from, from all the people I, I deal with, uh, one-off sales are, are fine. So at least in the beginning, it's okay. So yeah. if you get uh, half an orders from uh, USA, uh, did you consider uh, finding somebody in America to make in the, the importing and then uh, uh, sending uh, through local warehouse yeah. uh, to save the pain? Yeah, so today we do. Today we have three PL partners in, in, in the US. So we, we basically store it in, in there and when people buy from Amazon and Amazon orders three from us, it's actually shipped from those three PL locations. Um, if you're talking about exclusive distributors, uh, we're still looking for them. No, no actually I'm talking about uh, sending out uh, the orders which you got during your campaign. Yeah, so for the camp I think until you're, you're almost done with the campaign, you don't really know the distribution of the, probably all US, I don't know, but uh, I think it's a little too early. Uh, you, you still have some time to, to, to work, out, work that out. But on an ongoing basis, when you're doing retail, uh, I think you almost have to have 3PL. For, for one, Amazon won't sell unless you can ship to them from, from a US address. So yeah, eventually it, it gets there. And one final one, if possible. Uh, uh, would you do anything like that if you started another channels for marketing and promotion? Uh, because uh, very high competition in audio, in uh, earphones and things about that. So uh, would you do anything similar if you didn't go to crowdfunding? If you tried uh, mm. other ways to get to customer? Probably not. Uh, I, I don't really know, unless you have a backing from a big brand, I, I, I don't think uh, it's, I don't have the talent for that, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm a bit confused because uh, if I'm making a product, mm. there's a lot of money swimming around, you know, what, why would you, at what stage, I have two questions, at what stage would you go to a crowdfunding platform and why would you turn to a crowdfunding platform mm. when you could just get money to sell it anyway? I'm not too sure of the value because, you know, particularly in, in, in Asia, you know, as soon as a Chinese factory sees that you have a product on a crowdfunding platform, it's available on Taobao. So, three questions. <laughs> Why would you go to a crowdfunding right. platform? When? And aren't you scared that somebody will copy you? Right. So, uh, I think the next person is, is uh, 
is, is from Indiegogo actually. Uh, so, so make sure you ask her that as well. For me, um, first of all, there's no other good way to, to if you're doing, talking about hardware, hardware takes a lot of money. I certainly don't have millions of dollars lying around to try this and then try that and try that. So crowdfunding actually alongside with digital marketing are good test on your idea. If, if crowdfunding fails then you know, thank God you didn't spend the $500,000 on molding, right? Uh, if, if digital marketing doesn't attract 5,000 fans on Facebook, thank God you didn't go all into retail. Uh, so you almost have to do it as a test. Um, when you talk about copycat, so first of all, you, when you design a crowdfunding, is when you really believe in an idea, you really need funding. Uh, I think it's, a, it's not just to get money, it's also a good reality check. The second thing is um, double copying. Um, I, it comes up all the time, but I don't think it actually matters much unless you are very lucky to come up with a fidget spinner and then, right, I mean, what are the chances of that? Uh, from my experience, I've never met a person who actually is so successful that in their crowdfunding campaign, they already are, are being copied. Or, well, some are being copied, but when you are being copied still, you still have, when it's copycat China, they, they have certain sales channels that you probably wouldn't go anyway. Uh, the, the world is still very, very big and, um, and there are lots of places for you to sell to. Um, you, can, you can never stop them from copying. But I, my experience is unless you are really, really big size, uh, whatever they copy are, whatever the channels they're selling, you wouldn't be touching those channels anyway. That's, that's my, my personal experience. Have you raised money? Yeah, um, we. So, yeah. So where does crowd like you know in, the, in the, you know family and friends? Oh shit! I've got to make a product. Oh shit! People like it. Oh, so I. So I, 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 my question was, you know, at what point? Okay. Do you turn? You've just okay. said it's a good. Okay. Test. I, I did it a dumb way, so don't don't follow me. I, I put in my money, my my father's money for years, and then crowdfunding came. If I were to do it today, if I know what I knew, what I knew, what I learned, uh, I would first do Facebook ads to test if that's, so some, you didn't hear it from me, I've heard it from someone else. Uh, someone wanted to start a, a restaurant business about, okay, a website, uh, I want to pay $20 surprising me with food and delivery. So, so is there a demand? How do you find out? He did Facebook ads. If the Facebook ads attracts enough people, maybe 1% kick click rate, that's, a, that's an idea there. So. When you click on it, there's no such business. So where does it go? It goes to a fake website that he put up. The fake website has one cartoon character. Foodies rejoice, we'll surprise you with food. Give me a zip code and I'll surprise you with food. So that's another test. Facebook test passed, zip code test. Is it more personal, more work? If that even gets you another 1%, okay, the last page, because it's a fake surface, the second, second page is always, what a surprise, we are not live in your area yet. But if you give us your email, then we will give you free food when we are live. So you actually can test a lot on Facebook and then, okay, so, so you, get, you, get, you get email, you get statistics, now you can launch a campaign, right? Um, I did talk about you need to talk about factories, assuming all those doesn't, is taken care of. But the second test is really the Facebook, uh, sorry, the, 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 the crowdfunding test. If you actually can generate hundreds of thousands of dollars, then duh, you should go ahead. Um, so I think it's, it's actually not really just uh, a funding. It really is more like a, a validation and getting a first set of customers. Yeah. I think I overran probably. Any other so questions? So if you guys have more questions for Paul, you're very welcome to ask him directly at the floor. So Les, well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much for your speech, Paul.